Hey, hi, hello, I'm Amber, and that's my cat's treat. Alright guys, today we are tackling yet another Facebook Marketplace find. Currently, it looks like it could go in a farmhouse style house. This is not my style. I am more, I guess, uh, antique and eclectic. So I'm going to transform it into something that works for me. Let's talk about this description. One piece cabinet with locking hutch in very good condition. Uh-huh. Alright guys, we are headed to the Home Depot, my favorite place in all the land. So I just need a few things like Citri Strip, which I've never used before, but we're gonna give her a whirl because, oh, there we go. I've never stripped furniture before, but I have two ideas for this piece. Idea number one is I strip the entire outside because it is solid wood, it's really freaking heavy. You should have seen Cole and I <laughs> carrying it up the back stairs of our brownstone. It was, it was a sight. So, two ideas. Number one, strip the entire outside and then paint the inside. This video is gonna be hilarious because I don't have a phone holder, black. And then I have this really cool DIY I just watched on, I think it was on HGV Homemade maybe that I watched it. And I'm gonna do this like, oh, it'll be a surprise. This little DIY effect in the back of the cabinet. Just to get a little extra depth, give it a little more like antique feeling. Idea number two, because I've never stripped any kind of furniture before, I am thinking that maybe I should just strip the inside of the top cabinet so that the the inside top like where the glass is is wood and then paint the outside black so number one would be strip the entire thing paint only the inside black number two is strip only the inside but paint the outside back i'm going to attempt the inside strip first and depending on how that goes is how I'm going to make my decision if I'm going to strip the rest of the cabinet. I got it. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm not going to tell you how to do the stripping process because it is quite extensive and I don't want that to take up this entire video, but I will link below two videos that really helped me out when doing this. The only thing I will tell you is that it is a lot more challenging than what some people lead it on to be. The guy at Sherwin-Williams told me that a lot of people don't use chalk paint unless you want that chalky finish. He said that some people use baseboard paint, which is obviously shinier, but you don't need a wax coat and you don't need a special brush, so it's cheaper. And for me, I'm not so sure I'm sold on the chalk paint. I know that people say that's what you should do if you're like painting furniture because it's more durable. Obviously, I'm not gonna, sorry, I'm hungry. Oh, there's my cat. Obviously, I'm not gonna use wall paint like I did in my dresser video. It is not as durable, and I know some people are probably like, oh my god, I can't believe she's using wall paint, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we all live, we learn, it is what it is. This morning, I'm gonna do a little research, watch some YouTube videos, figure out what kind of paint I want, and then I'm gonna go to Home Depot and get paint. After some extensive research, I decided the chalk paint was not for me, regardless of popular opinion. So when I went to Home Depot, I asked the gentleman there their opinion, and they said that the bare premium alkyd enamel paint was the way to go so bada bing bada boom that's what i chose and that's what i went with before we get to paint though guys there's always prep and with this piece it wasn't exactly perfect so the doors were split or cracked whatever you want to call that here at both or all four hinges on the two bottom doors so i had to wiggle them and then i used some caulk to kind of seal it and make it smooth then I went and sanded the entire cabinet and all the doors, and then it was time to paint. All right, the outer shell of the cabinet is done. I haven't shown it to Cole yet. I made him stay out of the room. So I'm gonna call him in here and see his reaction. Cole, do you wanna come in here and see the color? What? 
He asked me if I want a treat. <laughs> Whoa! I love it. Yeah, it looks really good. I'm glad you chose that color. Now we have to decide what we want to do about this wood because it's kind of splotchy. But what do you think? What's your opinion? On the wood being splotchy? I mean, remember, we're going to do like the mirror thing. Yeah, I think because the mirror is going to be in the back and you're not going to really be looking, you know, like from the top down. You'd have to be like seven feet tall to be looking at the yeah. splotchiness on the shelves that it's not a big deal in my opinion. I think it kind of gives it some character. Okay, so you think we should keep it? I think so. Bear, what cool. do you think? Keep it. <laughs> All right. So guys, I have encountered a problem. I got all the doors on and then I was opening one, <laughs> taking a little video and the door fell off. The entire door fell off. And look at this, look, look it. The wood stripped. I don't know how to fix it. Thankfully all the other doors were fine, but this one, I'm gonna have to do some Googlings. Shout out to my trusty friend Google for teaching me this trick. All I needed was some toothpicks and some wood glue. I put the wood glue on the toothpicks, then I stuffed as many toothpicks as I could in the screw hole, and then I broke it off, let it dry, and it worked like a charm. And last but not least, guys, this is the final touch to giving new life to this cabinet. This is what I learned on HGTV Handmade. It's a little teaser. If you want to learn more, go watch the video. I'll link it in the description down below. Or you can watch the tutorial that's linked above in the top right of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to make my day, hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, and I will see you soon.